Hello! In this tabletop simulator tutorial, I will be going over how to create a mod from scratch and upload it to the Steam Workshop. The mod is going to be really simplistic, but I'm going to go over some important points to note while we go over this. So, to start, we'll go over how to create a tabletop simulator mod. I'm going to go ahead and click Create and click Single Player. This is going to allow me to create a single player environment. I could pick one of these games that already exists, but I'm not going to start there for this. I am going to start with the default that they gave me. The defaults are generated from a random table and a random background that's available on Tabletop Simulator. I'm going to change both of those because I prefer a different one for each of these. So I'm going to click the Objects tab up top click tables and I prefer the rectangle one I get some issues with hexagon and octagon though I won't be going over those in this video so just as a heads up I'm going to stick with rectangle and because this is a little dark you can see uh, it, it can get a little hard to see for me I like to change it to field you can see as soon as I checked as soon as I used the field background, and again I did that by going to Objects, Backgrounds, and selecting Field by clicking on it, everything got a bit brighter. That's because each background comes with its own light source. Like if we go to Downtown, it gets this light, or sorry, this dim yellow going on. So depending on which background you would like, Regal has... Uh, kind of the same yellow but a bit brighter that indoors feel depending on which light you like and which background you like select which background you would like to you but just keep in mind that it's not just the background that you're selecting it's also the light source so we have that i have my nice preferred default with the field and the rectangle now i'm going to add a custom object in this case, I'm going to be going all out and importing a custom model. So again, I'm going to go into the Objects menu, click Components, and from here you can see that these are all of the objects inside of Tabletop Simulator that you can add to your mod. If I wanted to add blocks, I can go in here and pull out a couple of these. If I wanted to add a board, such as any of these, I can just pull it in. And this can help you with quick prototyping if you don't want to have to create your own assets in order to do so. If you want to use something similar to what already exists, I recommend going off of those for your first draft. And here we can make a bunch of custom. Uh, we can bring in some cards. That's a full deck of 52 playing cards. I can get just a Joker, I can get just a random card, and so on and so forth. There's checkers, chess, uh, different types of dice, plastic or metal, that you can import, uh, figurines that already exist in Tabletop Simulator. Oh, let's put a Zomblower in there. And uh, these I also recommend just because they look really cool and they have an animation. They have, you can switch their mode, which let's flip this guy around real quick. Ooh, ooh spun him around a little too quick there. which changes how they face, has an attack button which shows an attack animation from it, and has a die. So if you've never played with those, those are really fun. Um, and then we have our tools. This is probably where you pull the most things out of uh, for functional purposes. You have note cards to add notes. You have an MP3 player to add music or sound effects. You have a counter that'll help you uh, count. You have a tablet which can be used to pull in um, any website you would like or anything available on the web. Then you have your clock, uh, an infinite bag which allows you to drop something into it and will allow you to pull infinite copies of that thing out. So if you have counters that uh, you want an infinite amount of, there's that. And then a normal bag, which will allow you to store uh, 
normally. It won't allow you to pull things out of it infinitely, and that's a good thing for some things if you have a limit, if you're supposed to have a limited amount, and then you have a calculator that does, well, calculator thing. But for today, I'm going to focus on custom. I'm going to import a custom model. What I did there is I went into custom, like I went into every other category, and I selected model. When I clicked it, it allowed me to drop a blank model into the game. It shows up as this little orb. So if you have troubles at any point in time and it tells you that it can't find an asset and just shows you an orb, that's because the model file can't be found. From there, some quick diagnostics. You can go into the model by right clicking and clicking custom, which will bring this up. And this was automatically brought up for us when we dropped a new one in. But you can go in here and you can look at the model mesh Check out this URL. You can actually just select what's in here, copy, and paste it into your browser to see if your browser is allowed to go over and pull that model. It could be something with your computer, or it could be that the model no longer exists at that location, and you have an outdated model. In either case, we're going to be starting with a fresh model. So if we click Browse Local Files, I'm just going to pull one, a random model in here. This is one that I made for a game. So what I did there is I clicked Browse Local Files to the right of Model Mesh, which opened up a browser on my computer. I selected benstan.obj. It popped up with this alert saying, Upload file to the Steam Cloud or load from your local disk. This is giving you the option to either have the link to the model be one that references the file on your computer, which you can see it starts with file here, and then it goes on to say where it is on my computer. Or you can immediately upload it to the Steam Cloud and it will replace it with the um, URL for where it is on the Steam Cloud from there. A note is that local files will not work in multiplayer. The reason for this is that it's on your computer not on the internet, which is where someone can access it. So if you were to play this with another player on a different computer, they would not be able to access the files on your computer, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it local because this is how I prefer to develop. So I click local and then I wrap up my custom model over here by clicking import. Normally you want to add a diffuse slash image to it as well. This is going to be the texture that will go over it. Sometimes you don't because you just want something that can be colored similar to these cubes. Like this guy can become any color that I tell him to be. So if you want to leave it without a diffuse image, that would be a use for that. Uh, normal slash bumps, I won't go into that because that's a, something that I don't use often. The collider um, is something that is used when it's locked, I believe, in order to be more specific about uh, how the phys colliz collision physics should happen with this object. We're going to ignore that for now. And non-convex goes with collider. Uh, the type, I'm just going to leave it at generic, but there are a couple options in here. Generic has no special properties. Figurines automatically straighten themselves upright when picked up by a player. So this guy is a figurine. If I were to, uh, I currently have physics off, but if I were to turn physics fully on and throw him, you'd see he'd flip over. But if I picked him up as a player now, he stands himself back up. Dice, uh, so this would allow you to randomize the object when spun and thrown. So if I picked it up and rattled it around, this is the button that allows that to respond like a dice. In this case, obviously this is a figurine, not a dice, so it didn't respond that way. A coin allows you to flip it. A board allows you to hide alt. So alt allows you to zoom in on things like this. If I'm hovering over this guy and hold alt, I get this pop-up of him. So I get to see them a bit better. It also works for things like cards. So if I can't see the seven of hearts, I can just hover over it and tap Alt, A-L-T, in case I'm saying that weird. Um, an alternative is I can hold M and zoom in, which allows me to just roam around to be magnified. But Alt works on everything except for boards. 
I'm holding Alt right now, but because this is a board, uh, Tabletop Simulator understands that, hey, you don't want to zoom in on this because it's a board. I, I want to zoom in on the things that are on top of the board, not the board itself. And then you have chips, something that will stack like a poker chip. So we're going to ignore that. A bag, so something that will allow you to hold things inside of it. And an infinite, which will operate like that. And allow you to pull infinite of one type of object out of it. We're just going to stick with generic for this one. Actually, you know what? We're going to make it a figure in because I want it to stand up. Because this is the model. This model, real quick, I, we had chips that were stacked on top of it to uh, look similar to a physical uh, product. So that's why it, it's that. So when I... I think I could throw it. Yeah, there we go. And then if I pick it back up, now it's a figurine, so it does the same thing Zomblor over here did. So, from here, now that we've made our beautiful mod, we're going to upload it to the Steam Workshop. If I click Modding up here and click Workshop Upload, we're going to get a message. And we're going to get a message because this is referencing a local file on our computer. And if we're going to upload this to the Steam Workshop, this is going to be a problem. Because if we try to upload this, again, this is a file on our computer, so nobody can access it from theirs. That would result in a problem on their computer if they try to load the mod. So if I click this, we get local files currently loaded. These won't work in multiplayer. We understand that. So we're going to back up. We're going to go back into modding, and we're going to click Cloud Manager. You're going to see a lot of folders in mine. That's because I worked on a lot of games. Um, if we click Upload All Loaded Files. It's this button in the top right with an up arrow on it. This will allow us to upload all currently loaded custom files to the Steam Cloud. So this basically does in batch what we could have done when we were importing the object. So remember when we went to Components, Custom, Model, added our object. I'm going to get rid of that so it's less confusing. And we browsed local files and picked one of these bad boys. We selected local and not cloud. That's because I didn't want to have to do it every time. So I kept it local and imported. Now, however, I can go into Cloud Manager and I can tell Tabletop Simulator to do it all for me at once. So I can click this up arrow and it asks me what folder I want to throw them in. So this is going to upload all custom local assets in my mod that I currently have loaded into a given cloud folder. Right now it's set to the root folder and it doesn't have any name for it. I'm going to set it up to test. I don't think I have a test already. Nope. Okay, so when I click upload, it's going to create a new test folder and it's going to add the model that is currently on our mod to that folder. Of course, this isn't as practical because we don't have a bunch of custom textures and models. But you get the idea. If we did, this would do it all for us in one go. I'm going to click Upload. We're going to give it a second. And it'll pop up and say Reloading Game. In fact, you can see it better down here. Reloading Game to replace all files with Steam Cloud version. Resave this game now. So we can see that this now has a test folder. And there's, excuse me, and there's our custom object. And if we go into these guys, we can click custom and we see that it no longer says file at the beginning and now says HTTP. So this is coming from the Steam user content cloud. You can see that over here as well. Cloud 3, Steam user content, and it goes on from there. Obviously, it's too large for here, but if we moved over, there we go. So this is the link where this exists on the cloud now. In order to make sure that this is uh, saved now. We can go into Games, click Save and Load, and I'm going to click Save Game. I'm going to name this Test. Again, we can select which folder it goes into. I'm just going to leave it on the root, name it Test, and click Save. We can see that it is now save number 1035 over in Test. We can see a quick thing, a quick overview for it. We can click options up here to either overwrite it, which would save it again and just save it over the last version. Expand, which would allow us to see the objects inside of it. 
additive load, which will allow us to add all of the objects in the mod to whatever we currently have open. So let me show you why that's useful. If we backed up, and just had our empty table, we could go back in here. It's also this one right here at the top, or we can click in here to see all of them. I clicked additive load. It loaded all of our objects exactly in the state that they were in because poor Cerberus has died again. So if we click modding and click workshop upload now, it won't give us a complaint. But all right, let me fix what I did here real quick. It's stuck with the rectangle table, but we need our field back. So now if I go into modding, workshop upload, it doesn't complain. Everything's good. It gives us two tabs. One is upload workshop and one is update workshop. They kind of speak for themselves. This is where you do your initial upload. This is where you update an existing um, mod. So my workshop title is going to be test. This is one part that we have to add. You don't have to add a description to start. And in fact, you can edit this on the Steam Workshop page, if I remember correctly. And then you have to add a workshop thumbnail URL. This is a little misleading because these must be local files. In fact, it will throw a fit and give you an error if you try to use a non-local file. So we're going to browse local files. Um, I have no idea what this is, but we're going to use that. And then you can use, set the options in here. The name of the game is test. The type, we're going to say that this is a game. If it were just a bunch of objects, which it clearly is, but we're going to pretend we have a game, we could select that. If it was a map, say for a uh, role-playing game, you can select that. If it's a utility, i.e. a scripted tool that allows you to do neat things there. Modding. Modding would allow you to, eh, I guess you kind of figure out if it's utility or modding. Uh, complexity. This is where you can say how complex your game is. This is something that will go into your Steam Workshop description. Your playing time, your number of players, and then there's a bunch of tags that you can add as well. Game, what type of game it is, what kind of assets it has, what language it's in, and you can even add customs. So, if we X out of everything and just go back to the Workshop tab, we can now click Upload. Our mod is now ready to be uploaded to the Steam Workshop. So, going to give that a click. It's going to say Beginning Upload to Workshop. Occasionally there are issues, but uh, just know that restarting a couple of times probably solves it or it probably just gives you something to do while the Steam Workshop uh, gets its act together. <laughs> There's a lot of people using it. Sometimes it gets a little overburdened. Sometimes something on your side uh, gets broken and you don't really know, so reloading helps. Sometimes um, I've learned that when I was using a non-local file as the thumbnail that created a lot of the issues. So. Now it has an alert, I think, if you try to use a non-local file. So if it's successful, though, you'll get your upload to Workshop was successful. Woo! Awesome. We can save this number to update the mod in the future. But we don't really. I mean, grab it if you'd like. But we still need to go to our Workshop page, upload some screenshots, and make the mod public. So let's go visit our Steam Workshop page for our custom mod real quick. If we... I'm going to switch over here real quick, head over to Steam, here's my Steam, I'm going to go to Tabletop Simulator under Library, select Workshop, of course we get the entire Steam Workshop, but I'm going to go to Your Files, Files You've Posted, and here's all the files I've posted. I'm going to select Test, which is the one that we just uploaded. Uh, it looks like the, oh, <laughs> this is what the thumbnail that I uploaded was. It, it's, it's random. It, it's no good for this. It's actually a texture for a box, so ignore that. Um, but now we have test, and people can click subscribe to download. You automatically are subscribed to your own stuff, so keep that in mind. Um, 
Inside of here, you can manage discussions about your mod, you can manage comments about your mod, and you can change the notes, or change your change notes. In here, um, you can see every instance in your game's history. So this is the first one. Uh, it was updated February 20th at 8.02 a.m. That's what I just did. If I click edit, I can write notes on it. This is a test. And save and back to your item. Now if I go to change notes, this is a test. Discuss this update in the discussion section. So this allows people who visit to immediately go to the discussion section and start a new discussion. But we will also be covering how this is currently hidden. When you first upload a tabletop simulator mod to the Steam Workshop, it's set to hidden, which means it will only be visible to you, admins, and anyone marked as a creator. So right now, I'm the only one that can see this. But if I come down here to owner controls, click change visibility, and change it to either public, so everyone can see it, friends only, so my friends can see it, my Steam friends can see it, or unlisted. Unlisted allows it to be accessed by anybody, but it doesn't throw it in the public section of the uh, Steam Workshop. So nobody will see it if they're just browsing around the workshop. This allows you to not have to add everybody that you want to see it as a friend and keeps it just a little under the radar. So if you wanted this for, say, testing um, or play testing before you go live, then I'd recommend this instead of friends only. Unless you want everybody to add you as a friend in order to play test it, then I'd say stick with friends only. Or you can make it public so anybody can see it when you're ready to go live. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to unlisted. It's gonna tell me up here that, hey, it's unlisted. It's visible to everybody, but won't show up in searches or in your profile. So n nobody can see this unless I give them the link. In order to get that link, I right clicked and you can click copy page URL. That'll copy this page's URL into your clipboard, which will allow you to share it. And anybody who goes to that link now, because it's unlisted, will be able to see this. So that, my friends, from start to finish, is how to upload a tabletop simulator mod. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments. I might make another video if it's a question that has enough uh, content on it to cover. But I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much. Have a great day.